One of the questions I get frequently is, how do you aim the trebuchet? Well, today we're going to talk about that. It was dead calm when I started setting up for this this morning. And now there's getting to be a pretty good breeze. So I hope it doesn't interfere with the microphone noise too much. That wind is to be expected. I am in Kansas. But if you're not in Kansas anymore, Toto, and find yourself in Santa Cruz, California, you find you need a tow, call Rossi's Body Shop and Towing for all your towing needs. First thing, you gotta have enough weight up here to get your arm moving. There's lots of physics behind that. More weight, the better, obviously. If you take off weight, it won't fling quite as far. Secondly, this thing tilts. This release arm, if you have it straight out like this, whatever you're flinging will come off really soon. The sling will just simply slip off of there. So basically, your fling will go straight up and come straight back down. If it even goes straight up. A lot of times it might even just go straight back. If you have this thing in a 90 degree angle like this, it pretty much won't come off of the arm, ever. It'll just kind of slam into the ground in front of the trebuchet. So somewhere between those two points is what you want. And that's what all this information is. 20 degrees, 15 degrees, 30 degrees. And third is the length of your sling. <sighs> Basically, a short sling will allow you to put more energy into the thing being flung, and a long sling will take more energy. Basically, the longer the sling, the less leverage you have on your object. However, that doesn't necessarily translate into a short sling going further and a long sling going shorter. This weird little bell curve happens when you're flinging with and changing your sling length. So you gotta find that sweet spot between how much weight you have, what your angle is, how much your object being flung weighs, and how long your sling is. So, it's just super easy. So that covers the three things you need for distance. For aiming left and right, first thing you can do is aim the entire trebuchet left or right, or you can aim your trough left and right. Putting this end of the trough, which is under the arm, putting that end of the trough to the right will shoot the object to the left. It reverses it. So I have this set up for very close to 35 degrees here. So I'm gonna write that down. Total sling length is pretty darn close to four foot one inch. Let's just call it 49 inches. And we're leaving all the weights on it. So let's see how far a water jug, a gallon water jug, goes with that setup. First fling went very close to 100 feet. Let's change the angle a little bit and see if our distance changes a little bit. Very close to 55 degrees. As you can see, it just kind of slammed it into the ground. A definite reduction in distance. I've now brought it back to 20 degrees. So it's a little straighter. We'll see how that goes. Same sling, same weight. And three, two, one. Well, it went a little further. Almost the same distance the other one went shorter.
So at 35 degrees with one gallon of water, 49 inch sling, we went almost exactly 100 feet. 55 degrees, 49 inch sling, we went about 70 feet. I didn't measure this. That's uh, just a total swag. Then at 20 degrees, 49 inch sling, I went about 140 feet. There again, I didn't measure it. Just kind of realized it wasn't quite halfway to the next jug. There's the one that impacted by the milk jug, fling number one. Fling number two is right there. And fling three is out here, which makes me kind of change my mind on the last milk jug. I think that was more like 130 feet. I'm going to make another sling that is shorter than this one. And we'll leave that the same. So all I'm doing is going to shorten the sling, and we'll see what the difference is. Three, two, one. So what did a shorter sling do for us? Well, I'm pretty sure it released a little earlier because it was absorbing less of the energy. I guess you could say it that way. It was taking less energy to make it go somewhere. Might be a better way to word it. It'll be interesting for me to hear the video, but I just venture guess it sounded slower. In other words, a shorter sling comes off sooner. So I could have tilted the release more, it would have hung on there a little bit longer, and would have gone a little further. So let's do that real quick. I now have the release set for 35 degrees. So looking at the numbers, we were at 35 degrees. Last time we went 100 feet at 35 degrees. This time at 35 degrees, we went about 120 feet. I think I'm really, really close to 55. We don't doesn't look like it through the camera. Two, one. I went pretty hard into the ground. Well, I think I went a little further than 70 feet. So I was going over the flings and the lengths and everything while I was doing the edit for this video. And I realized I forgot to explain something. So the first time we flung 35 degrees with our sling of 49 inches, it went really close to 100 feet. The second time we flung at 35 degrees and we had a sh slightly shorter sling, it went 120 feet approximately. So why did it go farther with a shorter sling? When I said earlier in the video that it's going to come off earlier and go more straight up. There's also another factor when you're flinging with a trebuchet and that's how much weight you have on the basket. And, well, also how much weight you fling. But the point is, with the shorter sling, it's kind of like having more leverage on the object. I was actually able to get it to go farther because the trebuchet wasn't stalling as bad. Even though, with a shorter sling, it sounds quieter, it actually was going farther. So basically, I need to add more weight if I want a longer sling. And if you think about that, it makes sense. Hopefully. Uh, if you ever played, you know, crack the whip as a kid, a whole, whole bunch of kids holding hands, you going around that circle, the inside person really, really feels the strain of everybody on the outside. But the outside person, if you have several kids, has to go really, really fast. Like if I was to take one of these water jugs, and just grab it by the handle and try to throw it, 
it would be a lot easier to throw it for me than if I just grabbed it by, you know, a four foot long rope and tried to throw it. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit. There is a lot of physics involved with this. So sometimes a shorter sling actually will make it go farther. Sometimes a shorter sling will actually make it go shorter. <laughs> kind of a way to know that we were stalling with the trebuchet though is at 20 degrees, both flings, no matter which length the sling was, went 130 feet. Very, very close to each other. And remember my first fling at 20 degrees was 140 and then I went out there and looked at it and I changed my mind at 130. But when I did 20 degrees again, it landed very close to the previous fling. So when your flattest angle, which was 20 degrees in this case, ended up flinging in the same length, but then as you made the angle greater, so we went to 35 and 55, and we saw a, the shorter sling go farther, that means the longer sling was stalling the trebuchet. So I hope that explains a little bit better. There really is a lot that goes into aiming one of these trebuchets and getting the and getting what you're flinging on target. So as you can see, there's a lot to this. It's not simple at all. That is why I have this book filled with a lot of the flings that I've done. Kept track of them because I just, I can't remember. On this shot, I got out to 577 feet. So I'm gonna try to replicate that. Looks like I used a 55 inch sling with a one liter bottle. So uh, let's try to do that again just for fun before we quit this video. The release is set for 15 degrees. I got a 55 inch sling, one liter pop bottle. That replicates what I had down there. So we'll see if we can get 600 feet out of this thing. And three, two, one. Oh, I gotta release the winch first. All right, take two. Trebuchet, 100 feet, 200 feet, and the bottle is about 250 maybe. I'd say it's really close to being halfway between the two. <sighs> All right, so that distance to that milk jug and the helium thing, I'd say I'm pretty darn close to halfway. So 250 feet was all I got instead of 500 and some. That does not make sense to me. I'm guessing I lost some weight off of the basket because I got to fill up with sand. So maybe uh, the rain and the snow we've had this winter washed some sand out and I don't have as much weight. It's the only thing I can figure right now. Darn it. <laughs> but anyway, the point of this was more about the aiming of it. I think we covered that good enough. So we're going to end this here. And if you have any suggestions for something you'd like to see flown, let me know. I had a couple of pumpkins back at Halloween, but they froze and turned into squish before I could get them flown. So that was very sad. Thanks for watching, y'all. See y'all later.